Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. If you've not been here before, my name is Jamie Fenn and today I'm going to address a question that I've been asked a ton of times and that is, how do you color match different types of clips with one another? Now, if you wanna do any type of coloring or want to become a colorist, you're gonna to have to know how to do this basic thing pretty well. And sometimes what happens is you'll have a bunch of different footage from your day, from a GoPro, from a drone, and from a you know your friend's camera, and they're all shot in different white balances, maybe at different times of the day. Well, today I'm gonna to teach you how to match those up so it looks like it's a pretty well-balanced image. Let's open up DaVinci Resolve and I'll teach you how to color match clips. For this example, I have four clips here and the first one is a drone shot during the golden hour. I have another shot here that is kind of midday from a GoPro. I have another shot here, which is midday from a Canon point and shoot G7X Mark II. And this last clip is actually a GoPro as well. So with shot matching, I typically like to start with the best clip with the best exposure from the best camera. And the reason is, is because I want to shot match everything to the best image. And so for this example, I'm not going to necessarily do that just because I want to use something that has a little bit more color, kind of like a all around white. It's got some blue sky. There's got some skin tones. And so I'm going to use this GoPro clip here. So I'm going to come up and just add a node real quick and just do a basic primary grade. I'm going to look at my waveform and I'm going to add first some contrast, then some saturation, and then also come over here expand this out and look at the RGB. Now immediately I look at the tops, which is the highlights and the bottoms, which is the shadows. And what I like to do to balance images first is just to make sure that these are kind of all matched up. And I know the middle here, the top up here is white and pretty neutral. And so what I'll do for white balance is come down here for the quick you know, the quick get around for white balance and select either something in the clouds that's neutral white or whatever I want to be pretty much white. So I'm going to select the snow like that. You can see that the blue jumps a little bit. But if you look down here on the on our shadows, you'll see that the red is a little high. So what I like to do is come into the curves and select the red. And I'm just going to pull the shadows down just a little bit like that. I'm also going to pull the overall luminance down of every channel until I see which ones start to touch first. And I notice that the blue and red are pretty on, but now the green is a little high. So I'm going to click on the green and pull the green down. And you can see these start to adjust as well. So you kind of have to just keep your eyes on it. All right. So now what I want to do is take this still frame right here and reference my other shots to color match to it. Instead of going back and forth between your clips, you can actually just right click on the actual viewer window and select grab still. What that'll do is create a still frame. It'll basically snapshot that and then you'll be able to use it in reference to your other clips. If you don't see it up here on the left, you can just click on gallery and it should display right there. All right, so let's color match this next GoPro clip. So there we go. We got a clip here like that. And what I want to do is actually just come in here and right click on the clip that we just graded and apply grade. Now that will somewhat get us into the ballpark because one, it's the same camera and two, it's kind of the same time of day. It's got the same type of, you know, composition. And what I want to do is just double check the scopes. I want to look at our waveform real quick. I'm going to adjust the highlights here by coming to our Y and just pulling this down so there's no there's no clipping and then also look at our shadows and maybe even pull them down a little bit until, you know, just a little bit until it basically almost touches the bottom. Next, you know, look at our RGB, kind of make sure everything matches up. What I like to do is just make sure our highlights are relatively close, but everything looks pretty, pretty well balanced. Also, I'm going to select the white balance picker come in here and select something that I know that's pure white or that I want to be pure white. And I'm going to select the clouds up here and that changes it to be a little bit cooler. All right. So now once we've done that, I'm just going to right click on the frame and select show reference wipe. 
And now what's awesome is that we can go back and forth and look at the clips simultaneously. But you have to keep in mind this is our this is our like golden money shot here. So we have to make sure that the shot that we're trying to grade matches it or else you know, it'll look kind of uneven. And we want to make all these shots to kind of feel like they're in the same world. A good way to do this, if you can't trust your eyes, or if you don't trust your eyes, or if you want something else to reference from, we can pull up our scopes. And what's really cool about using scopes and the, you know, the, the reference wipe here is when we wipe back and forth, we can actually see it corresponding with our scopes. Our blues in our clip could maybe even come up just a little bit. So I'm going to just look at the scopes purely right now and kind of keep my eye in the background here. But right now I'm just going to click on the blue and I'm going to bring it up until it kind of matches up with the curve of the one that we're wiping against. So keep bringing it, bring it down maybe a little bit. I'm also going to do the same thing with the green. Just kind of keep my eyes on things. You know, if the green looks a little low, we can even bring it up like that and then pull up our red and our blue and kind of get everything to be matched up high like that. And sometimes you do all these adjustments and then you look at it and you're like, ah, I don't like that. So sometimes what I like to do is just restart and I'm not restarting completely, but I'm just pulling all of the, the highlights of the red, green and blue channel back to where they were. I'm going to look at it real quick one more time. And just kind of make some slight adjustments because sometimes it's just best to do that. So I'm going to pull up the red a little bit and then also maybe bring that blue down to like that. And now when I wipe back and forth, they look like they're pretty, pretty well matched. And what I want to do also is make sure that the saturation is up as well. So I'm kind of just going back and forth looking at the vector scope now. I'm noticing the clip on the left is not as saturated as the one on the right in some aspects, but it's very close. You know, it's very close. And looking at our waveform, I'm going to pull this down ever so slightly. And now we have like a pretty matched shot. Um, we could do a little bit more tinkering here and there, but that was just between two GoPro clips. Now, what happens if you have a different camera? Now we have a drone shot here. And I'm going to do another primary grade just real quick. I'm going to turn up some contrast, turn up the saturation, select a uh, white balance to be something like mm, that. It kind of cools the whole image down. And I'm going to look at the RGB. And the first thing I notice is the blue channel is super high. So I'm just going to turn that down a little bit and also pull the overall luminance of the shadows down. And I noticed that the blue is a little high, but the red and the green are pretty similar. I'm gonna pull the blue down. And now we have a pretty well balanced image, very quick, very rough grade, but I want to now match this to the to the golden shot. I'm gonna right click and show reference wipe. And I keep looking at the blue sky because I like to make sure that the blue sky looks somewhat matched up. And I'm looking at the clouds in the sky. So you have to remember that this drone shot was shot during golden hour. So it's going to be a little difficult to match up, but you can still kind of get it ballparked. Immediately right off the bat, you can see that the highlights have a lot of, uh, you know, golden glow in them. They're a little bit warmer. And the true whites here are definitely really white. So if I were to come down here and select the white balance and just pick something like that, you're still going to have like that golden glow. So what I'm going to do is just pull up the waveform and immediately off the bat I realize that the waveform could probably come up just a little bit like that. And I'm going to leave the shadows down and then now I'm going to pull up the RGB and just kind of swipe back and forth looking at our channels here. And I'm looking at like the highest parts of the red, kind of like the middle parts here, looking at the greens, looking at the blues. and Honestly, I feel like the red could come up maybe just a little bit. And also when you do this, you can also look at midtones. So for example, if you see the green and you want to pull some green out, you can come down to the curves and you know, it'll make the shot look a little bit more purple.
You can push green into the mid-tones. You can adjust these clips however you like. You don't have to stay just to uh, you know, highlights and shadows, although that is pretty much what's really super important, but you may have to start adjusting, you know, putting some some warm tones into the mid-tones or, you know, putting you know, some uh, the correct balance of light to kind of match these up. Sometimes looking at the scopes is not going to help you. But yeah, anyway, so looking at the sky, it looks pretty similar. The snow looks pretty similar and the shots look pretty well matched. So sometimes what I like to do when I'm not really focused on specific things and I just want to add a little flavor, and this is just a personal thing, I like to come into the edit tab and go up to the effects library and drag in an adjustment clip. And I like to put it over my whole video or whatever I want to affect with this adjustment clip. I come into the color tab and I'm going to turn off the reference wipe. And I will add a creative LUT to everything. But the thing is, is that it's easy to get carried away with just slapping a LUT on and being like, all right, that's awesome. You know, because, you know, personally, I do that right now. And I look at it and I think it's a little too saturated. It's a little too contrasty. So what I like to do is come into the key, come down to the key output. And I just turn the gain down to about point. 2.3. And the way I look at gain is zero being zero, but one, when you turn it up to one, is 100%. So I like to personally, again, this is all personal kind of stuff. I like to go between 0.2 and 0.3, so like 20% to 30% of the LUT. And it gives it just a little bit of a, you know, a boost in certain areas. And this also depends on how strong the LUT is. So this number may vary but I sometimes think that people can overdo it before they get a, you know, a second pair of eyes on it or look at it the next day. And I like to just kind of, you know, give it a little flavor. And this LUT is actually the teal and orange day for my personal LUT pack. It's probably my favorite LUT. And the link is down in the description if you want to check it out. There's also a freebie, so feel free to check that out. And now we have all four clips that are really, you know, as close as possible. I mean, I could, like I said, I could do a little bit more tinkering, but these clips are all pretty similar. They all live in the same world. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and if you have any other questions, comment down below. I'll try my best to answer it, and I will see you in my next video. Thanks.